I am YouTuber FZappa20, and you are about to watch a video by the Jammin' Music Man, a guy that I once described as the nicest dude on the internet. I'm sticking to that statement. You'll see it in the videos here. He brings a sincere enthusiasm on every subject he hits. Music, wrestling, movies, whatever it is. His videos are fun, like you're about to see right now. Hi, I'm Kurt Loder with an MTV News special report on a very sad day. Kurt Cobain, the leader of one of rock's most gifted and promising bands, Nirvana, is dead. And this is the story as we know it so far. Cobain's body was found in a house in Seattle on Friday morning. He was dead of an apparently self-inflicted shotgun blast to the head. Police found what is said to be a suicide note at the scene, but have not yet divulged its contents. Cobain, who was 27, had reportedly been missing for about six days, according to his mother. The Los Angeles Times reported on Wednesday that Nirvana was breaking up. And that Cobain was planning to undergo drug rehabilitation. A source close to the band told MTV News earlier this week that while that story sounded bad, it was better than what was, quote, really going on. That comment remains to be clarified. Cobain's body was found in a house in Seattle where he had previously lived and which he still owned. It was discovered by an electrician who had showed up at around 8.40 a.m. this morning, Friday morning, to do some work at the house. He looked in a window and said he recognized the body on the floor inside as Cobain's. Before calling police, the electrician first called a local radio station to bring the news. Although at press time, police were declining to officially identify the body as that of Cobain, pending notification of next of kin, a reporter for the Seattle Post Intelligencer, who was on the scene, ID'd the body as Cobain's. And uh, several other news outlets have also gone public with that information. And Cobain's wife, singer Courtney Love, had just canceled a UK tour. She was not over there yet with her band Hole. Her current whereabouts are unknown, but she is presumably with the baby daughter she had with Cobain, Frances Bean. For the, uh, we're going to take a look at. Uh, Do look you remember where Cobain. you were on April the 8th, 1994? What's up, guys? It's me, Jammin' Music Man, and we recently passed the 25th anniversary of the death of Kurt Cobain. And I just wanted to spend these next few minutes just talking about, uh, you know, where you guys were on April the 8th, 1994, the life and legacy of Kurt Cobain and the impact of Nirvana's music. But uh, for me personally, you know, I was very young at the time, so I really can't say I remember where I was when I heard the news that Kurt Cobain had passed but from my my memories of that time period i just remember a lot of the older generation you know basically having really harsh mixed opinions of you know of him taking his life and i remember like a lot of like 90s talk shows discussing what cobain had did his lifestyle his marriage with courtney love you know i remember all that stuff but like i said really can't say i remember when i heard the news but it wasn't until i was a little bit older uh when i started you know really getting into music and really into nirvana you know i remember the first nirvana album i ever bought was never mind like a true 90s kid and i bought it in the 90s at walmart like i said like a true 90s kid and you know, of course I discovered all the other Nirvana albums but I gotta say probably my favorite Nirvana album is uh, the MTV Unplugged in New York I love that album I love that uh, you know concert that MTV would always play on the anniversary of Cobain's death you know remember them doing it like uh, every anniversary of his death back in the 90s and I think they did it in the 2000s too but they don't do it anymore I mean MTV now that's a whole nother topic that we'll discuss at a later date and time you, you guys know how I feel about MTV now but uh, you know I love that concert and if you've never seen it I highly recommend checking out legendary unforgettable concert um, but the life and legacy of uh, Kurt Cobain, I mean, so many people saw their sales in Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain was like really the first anti-hero rock star that broke out into the mainstream. I mean, he was the furthest thing from a rock star. Uh, you know, the Nirvana didn't even think Nevermind would reach the number one Billboard, cha uh, Billboard charts like it did. I mean, when that whole Nirvana thing happened with Nevermind, I mean, it's such a moment in time that I don't know if we'll ever see anything like that ever again. But, you know, of course, Nevermind, it uh, knocked off uh, Michael Jackson's uh, 
Dangerous album back in 1991, and nobody had really even heard of Nirvana at that time. They had put out Bleach in 1989, which was, you know, it was a, a minor indie hit. Nothing big, nothing that broke out to the mainstream, but when they knocked off Michael Jackson's Dangerous album, what a moment in time. Like, who the hell is this band? And, of course, there were so many other Seattle bands going on at that time. Of course, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. I love all those bands. Those bands right there, they have a special place in my heart. But, uh, you know, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana, you know, gotta be some of the greatest rock bands of all time. And they definitely had a big, huge influence on my life. But I would have to say the negative effects of you know the success of Nirvana and all those other grunge bands is like you have a lot of copycat bands just like with anything once something finds success you know there's going to be tons of other bands or people out there that are going to try to copy that and you know there's been a whole lot of other like copycat act bands that you can really just tell they're just trying to imitate Nirvana but you know we're not here to talk about that but they definitely did have a big long lasting influence on rock music because me personally I feel like rock music really hasn't changed since the 90s it's still that dark depressing rock music and I feel like that's why so many people have gravitated towards like rap electronic music because it's you know not dark and depressing like rock music so rock music has really been in a weird state ever since the death of Kurt Cobain rock music doesn't know where it wants to go like it's afraid of success like how it was back in the 70s and the 80s so I mean rock music is it's like I said, it's been in a real weird state for, you know, 20-something years now. That's a whole nother topic. But the influence and impact of Nirvana and Kurt Cobain definitely, definitely had a big impact on music. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, they're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now. So, congrats to them. Uh, I also follow Frances Bean on Twitter. And, you know, she's on Instagram, you know, of course, Kurt Cobain's daughter. And I know Frances Bean, I know her favorite rock band is Oasis. And, you know, I'm a big Oasis fan. So that's cool. But, uh, you know, I would love to hear from you guys about, uh, you know, where were you on that day? April the 8th, 1994. I'd love to know. Leave a comment below. What are some of your favorite Nirvana albums? What are some of your favorite Nirvana songs? What's some of your favorite Kurt Cobain Nirvana moments? I would like to know, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to give this video a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, just want to say in closing, uh, you know, rest in peace, Kurt Cobain. Your music will last forever. You won't be forget forgotten no time soon. But once again, I'm Jammin' Music Man. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.